to, uh, to the Senate. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit of a, you know, that view behind me. Uh, I'm sure no one will be looking at me, but that's fine. Um, welcome to uh, our school resources launch today. Uh, we're delighted to be uh, launching um, two resources. Our toolkit for teachers and practitioners working with Gypsy Roma and Traveller children in the Welsh school system. And one goal, we goal, our anti-racism in the primary school wall hanging resource. Uh, my name is uh, Ian Simpson and uh, I'm the Education Manager for Show Races in the Red Card. I know some of you, but uh, I haven't met all of you, so it would be great if, uh, if after today's event, if you uh, can introduce yourself and we'd love to talk to you about the we'll kind of over toolkit and, uh, and how we can sort of work together to make sure it gets into your uh, schools. Um, we're pleased to be here, um, obviously at the heart of the Welsh Government in the Senate building to acknowledge the support that they have given us in developing these resources and helping us to tackle racism and prejudice through education. Our keynote speaker today uh, has been incredibly supportive of our campaign, including attending a number of events this year. Uh, after being elected as Assembly Member for Covid South in 2011, he was appointed uh, Deputy Minister for Skills and Technology in June 2013. And then, in September of last year, he became the Deputy Minister for Culture, Sport and Tourism. I have it on very good authority that among his many interests, he is a Wrexham FC fan, or perhaps I should say a long-suffering Wrexham FC fan. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ken Skates AM uh, to speak on behalf of the Welsh Government. to be with you this morning. It really is wonderful and it's, uh, it's particularly pleasing to see so many guests in attendance from a range of organisations from right across Wales. I do think that that illustrates how show racism, the red card, is working with so many partners and promoting important anti-racism messages. Now this toolkit and the wall hanger contribute to and support our aim that every child and young person regardless of their background, should benefit from excellent teaching and a supportive learning environment. Published last autumn, Qualified for Life, our education improvement plan for three to 19 year olds in Wales, confirms our commitment to race standards and achievement levels. It sets out a vision that all young people will enjoy learning, which will in turn help them to succeed and inspire them for life. To achieve this, there is no doubt that we need to create an inclusive learning environment for all children, where all cultural and social backgrounds are valued and indeed respected to the full. We recognise that there are barriers to gypsy, roamer and travellers reaching their potential at school. These can include experiencing hostility and even racism. The toolkit has been developed to support teachers in settling Gypsy, Roma and Traveller children into the school environment. It provides activities that are relevant and appropriate, which are designed to remove barriers and promote an inclusive school experience. These resources are also designed to help teachers recognise and respond appropriately to racism, to embed issues of quality and diversity in school and provide varied, interesting and engaging activities. The toolkit will complement Travelling Together, a suite of resources published last year to promote the integration of gypsy and traveller culture into the national curriculum. Travelling Together, I feel, recognises that an understanding and an acceptance of cultural differences is key to effective educational support. And the Welsh Government wants to give young people life chances whatever their race, religion or social group. It's always been my belief that where a young person wants to go in life should not be predicated on where they come from. So congratulations to Show Racism, the red card, for the work that has been done in carrying out and developing these resources. I'm sure they will play a crucial role in helping teachers to relay important anti-racism messages to young people which is utterly essential as they develop into adult life. Congratulations and the Alpha Marianne. Thank you very much to the Minister for those kind words. My name is 
Laura Pitcock and I'm the manager of the education team in the north east of England and this is my colleague Tina Simbo. She is an anti-racism education worker. Both Tina and I along with our colleague Liz Bennett now on maternity leave entered into discussions with the Welsh Government a year ago to look at the possibility of creating a toolkit which would serve as an aid, as a support to teachers and other practitioners who are open and willing to create more equal classrooms and schools for Gypsy, Roma and traveller children. The education team you might be wondering why are these Geordies have anything to do with our Welsh education system, but we were allocated this job because of our track record in producing resources like this. So what were we asked to do? We were first and foremost asked to think about the barriers that Gypsy, Roma and Traveller and young people face in the Welsh education system that lead to their attendance and formal academic achievement to be lower than that of other non-GLT communities. Our consultation period started a year ago and it was very important to all of us that we became aware very early on of the context here in Wales and the nuances in and between the communities. First, we conducted a desktop research period, reading papers, academic books, government documents, research, and then more importantly, we went on to organise two consultation visits to Wales to conduct interviews and focus groups with travel education service workers, teachers, young people from the GLT communities, and other professionals. The two consultation visits were a fascinating insight into the barriers and the opportunities that are out there. We organised a packed schedule of interviews, focus groups and workshops and met some wonderful professionals and young people along the way. And I think before we go on to talk about some of the more challenging or negative aspects of the current system that was shared during our consultation, we should pay tribute to the unbelievable work being done by some of the most passionate and dedicated people I have ever met. And I want to take this opportunity to pay special tribute to the Traveller Education Service. Whose work, are complete, whose work are completely dedicated to secure the best educational outcomes for Gypsy, Roma and Traveller young people and their families. And I think that deserves a massive round of applause. We also want to note that the toolkit in its current form, had it not been, um, it wouldn't be in its current form, sorry, had it not been for the welcome, but very, very challenging feedback of the expert consultation group. They went read what we had produced and pushed us to think again about the format, the ideas and advice. And then they pushed us again, and then again, uh, to make this resource the best it can possibly be. So a massive and heartfelt thank you to those of you that took the time just to be prepared to look through this and provide your criticism, uh, which was extremely constructive. You know who you are, and actually a lot of you are mentioned in the toolkit itself. Tina is now going to talk a little bit more in depth about the content of the toolkit. Okay, so throughout the consultation, there was a great deal of consistency in the messages that were shared with us from our participants. And all of this crystallised in what we have read in the research period about the barriers to equal education opportunities. Please bear in mind um, that what I'm about to outline does not apply to every group and to every person in that support group. And by that I mean that an issue that might affect a Roma family may not affect an Irish traveller family. And an issue that might affect one Irish kind of family may not affect other Irish kind of families. However, what I'm about to say are pretty things. So consequently, people told us that there was difficulty for some newly arrived gypsy, Roma and Catholic people to settle into their new school. That there are issues around cultural dilution, that the porn prejudice and racism is still experienced by GLT peoples, that there is a tension and anxiety around transition into secondary school, that there are cultural conflicts around sex education and different forms of communication and mistrust of historic figures. Other themes highlighted were the way in which formal education and its value is perceived in these GLT communities, the difficulties of newly arrived Roma people in their access to English and traditional language support, and the lack of outreach and community engagement in many areas. Okay. It's fundamental that when trying to make our schools and societies more equal for all, that our mindset is focused on institutions changing for individuals rather than individuals changing for institutions. And we know it's not within the power of each and every teacher with their varied and pressing demands to be able to have an individualised curriculum for every people. 
and we know that they too can't change the people's social and economic status and um, or their perception of education or life. But for every barrier, there is an opportunity to make a positive change towards the being more inclusive. The information and insight from the consultation came in the chapters of the toolkit. We didn't make the chapter look through reading based, based on our, or based on our own assumptions of the situation. We rely on the expert authenticity of those who experience the structural barriers, racism and exclusion, and those working alongside those communities. The toolkit has definitely challenged me, and I hope it challenges others too, but in a positive way, of course. I hope it challenges people in a way that allows them to grow, reflect on their own behaviours, and inspires them to make change, however small that may be. My challenge came from agonising over the cultural conflicts and sensitivities, and a sense that there's an inherent contradiction in trying to devise a toolkit which is a bit of practical support for teachers, but cannot address the centuries-old marginalisations of these groups. It will not address the problem that societies are very often set up for the benefit and advancement of majority communities, which is often at the expense of minority communities. One of the first pieces of advice we were given, um, or one of the very first interviews, and actually the person who gave us this is truly to the room with the nail and the chair, but she said, do not set out to, to create this toolkit with the idea that we will change anybody's culture. And what a brilliant piece of advice that was, because once you accept another person's way of life, you really have to reflect on how and why our current structures exclude some young people, be it based on their ethnicity, their class, their sexual orientation, or any of the other things that make up our identity. Considering how our education system can work for everybody is difficult. Throughout this toolkit, we've tried to make um, no broader considerations that the school may have little control over, but that can impact on the way teachers and professionals perceive Gypsy and Roma and traveller children. We've done this by, within the toolkit, providing reflection boxes where we ask the reader to question their assumptions, to challenge uh, the reader to think about their ideas of the children or the parent and uh, parents' motivation through a less racialised lens. We've also provided, provided lots and lots of practical tips to make school more welcoming to Gypsy, Roma and Traveller children. Tips about how to deconstruct racist ideas and attitudes. Ideas about how to challenge the stereotypes connected with these vastly diverse groups. Ideas about how to make the school a safer place. One way young people are absolutely certain that if any racist incident occurs, it should be taken seriously, that the young person will be believed and action will be taken to prevent it ever happening again. Of course, we would love this toolkit to be version 1 or volume 1. However, I'm not sure any teacher would have read anything that's any longer than this, which means we have signposted teachers to lots and lots of useful resources and websites in an attempt to broaden the toolkit's reach. This toolkit can help teachers who are looking to implement practical change, sometimes easy and sometimes not as easy, and, and it has definitely been informed by Gypsy, Roma and Traveller young people and um, those who work alongside Gypsy, Roma and Traveller people. It is supposed to be informative, enjoyable, easy to read and the idea is realistic to implement. What this toolkit cannot do, and I want to be really, really clear about this, is it cannot replace human interaction or human relationships. Trust of a school community is built through relationships. Relationships take time, compromise, negotiation, and consistency. This toolkit can be your friend whilst you build these relationships. The barriers for gypsy women and other children in the formal education system are many, very complex, and central goals. It's important that we acknowledge this, that it never sit in our consciousness and remain committed to breaking down these structural inequalities. But let us now imagine for one moment that in each and every school across Wales, that our teachers are dedicated to making school as welcoming, useful, culturally affirming, and safe for gypsy women and travel children. Imagine the power and cumulative impact of all these teachers and their efforts. Imagine the way in which all young people benefit from a safer, richer, warmer environment in which they are free to realise their potential inside and outside of school. We hope this toolkit can support such efforts. So I'd like to say thank you for listening to us. Um, and please spread the word about the toolkit and colleagues. If you have any questions, we will be here for a few minutes before we fly
just to say that the toolkit will be hosted we just found out today, which is quite exciting, on the show races of the Red Card website. So there will be a link on the Welsh Government website where you can be led then to the show races of the Red Card website and it will be released very, very soon. But what is also going to happen is everybody that's been in attendance here today will get a link sent to them where you can see the show kit. So now I'm going to hand over to Ian Simpson to talk to us again about the second project that we're launching today, the One Gold War Hunger. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to say a really big thank you to, uh, to Laura, Tina and their colleague Liz who um, obviously can't be here because of maternity leave. Um, as you heard, they've done a lot of work and we're really grateful to them. So thank you guys uh, and I think perhaps uh, another round of applause would be. Um, yeah, it kind of feels like you're getting a two for one today, man, which is nice. Um, there are two resources we're launching. And uh, the Warhanger um, resource that we provided was something which I and my other colleagues um, have been developing over a number of months. So, um, it's worth saying from the start um, that there have been lots of times along this journey of developing the resource that I thought this day would never come. Um, and it has been uh, times of painstaking process. Uh, we really wanted the Warhanger to be the best resource that it could possibly be. Uh, and that meant agonising over different elements of it for uh, many hours sometimes and um, we're delighted to be here today to launch it. Um, it has been an incredibly collaborative process uh, within our own staff team uh, and, uh, and also with the support and advice of, of colleagues uh, from the steering group that we established, uh, testing activities in the classroom uh, with young people across Wales. That being said, um, there is one person uh, in particular who should be very embarrassed when I'm doing this, uh, whose passion and enthusiasm uh, for the project has been a real driving force uh, behind making it a reality. Uh, so I would like to publicly thank my colleague Claire Skidmore uh, for all the hard work she has wandering around some over the camera. Good talk. Good talk. Well, there she is. Everyone, everyone say thank you for Claire. Um, and now that we have committed to print and uh, it's uh, relatively permanent, I have taken what I think is the mature and sensible decision to never ever look at it again. So that has been my response. Um, but uh, why do we develop this resource? Um, there are a number of reasons uh, for this. Um, we, uh, we surveyed over 140 teachers uh, across Wales and we received the following results, which are displayed on your screen, but I will go through them with you because I'm conscious they're not that large. 62% um, of the respondents stated that the main difficulty they faced in teaching anti-racism was their subject knowledge and their confidence. And a further 43% said that a lack of resources was the main barrier. And we know anecdotally lots of teachers were saying to us, this is fine for a PSE lesson, this is fine for us to use for global citizenship. But how do we embed anti-racism in a numeracy lesson, or a science lesson, or one of those subjects which you don't readily associate with um, something anti-racist? So we really wanted to address that, and give teachers a resource that can be used proactively throughout the school year in a number of different lessons, as well as potentially reactive if the need should arise. Um, Essence reports, uh, which came out uh, last June, um, Action on Bullying, highlighted the ongoing need to tackle bullying in all its forms, uh, and particularly for those at a higher than average risk, uh, including minority, ethnic, um, or religious groups. We wanted young people to feel safe and valued in their schools, and we really think this is a resource um, that will help to do that. It was also because of comments like this one. Um, this is a, a comment in the survey from a teacher who claim to be teaching anti-racism in their school, but who felt that some of the terms that are displayed were acceptable to be used. And obviously that was of, of concern to us. We know that there is still a lot of misunderstanding and a lack of awareness around racial equality. We also know from speaking to young people, over 3,000 last year across Wales, that one in three think that the N-word is acceptable to use in their conversations, and that 48%, almost half, thought coloured 
was an acceptable term to use to describe a black person. So we were very clear that more needed to be done to help teachers embed this kind of education in a classroom on a monthly, weekly and daily basis. So we wanted to ensure that every primary school teacher had a resource they could access in their school to give them the confidence to do that. Um, so one goal, one goal, we were delighted that the Welsh Government agreed with us that this resource would be invaluable to teachers and that they were willing to fund the development and production of it for every school across Wales, all 1,331 of them. Excuse me. So it was in September of last year uh, that in the time on the tradition of all good projects, we set up a steering group, that's what you have to do, and uh, we included a number of current and former teachers, uh, representatives from Welsh Government, local authorities, and ESTIN were included in that steering group because we wanted to ensure that the, uh, the resource uh, had all the right curriculum knowledge, the right expertise and skills, and diversity in that group to deliver what is an ambitious resource to a very high standard and within quite a tight timescale. So after uh, a lot of deliberation and discussion, we settled on um, 12 uh, areas that we would include in the booklets. Uh, so they included the introduction, uh, a booklet on terminology, which we know is, is very um, important and key for teachers, a step-by-step -step guide to reporting racism. Uh, and my colleague Neil will talk a little bit more about that later on. Uh, literacy and numeracy, which we know are key priorities for the Welsh Government at the moment. RE, science, history, geography, drama and music, physical education and creative arts which is tied in very much with the creative arts competition that we run for schools across Wales. So once we finalised the list, uh, the job uh, was to develop the content for each booklet and to start to work on that. Uh, as you can see, we wanted to ensure that the resource was visually striking, that it was well designed, uh, and that people would want to use it. They would see it and think, what is that, and look at it and hopefully use it. It's, uh, it's packed full of effective activities, and some useful facts and figures as well. Perhaps not unsurprisingly, given our campaign uh, and our connections, we came up with the idea of a sports team. And uh, we wanted a, an array of different characters for each booklet, uh, a team that was designed to be inclusive uh, and make each booklet distinctive and easily identifiable from the other booklets. So each booklet has its own character which continues through the booklet. The resource is fully bilingual uh, and has two full activities and further work sections should teachers wish to build on the lessons contained within it. We wanted to have a consistent theme running through each of the booklets to ensure continuity and to make them as user friendly as they possibly could be. We've also included a, a full equipment list, uh, an introduction to each activity and clear instructions for how that activity should be run. We have also uh, very helpfully of course included useful website links on most of the booklets uh, again, for further research and information should that be um, required. Um, on the screen is just uh, a couple of examples of the booklets that we've, uh, that we've designed. And um, as I say, um, if you get a chance, um, please uh, do have a look at them. Uh, they're on display over uh, on the table to, uh, to your right. Uh, and um, just to say, though, um, under no circumstances, anyone will have to take them away with them. Uh, these are just for display purposes and we will be checked. Um, so, we, uh, so we tested the activities in a lot of our own workshops um, in a variety of different settings across Wales with primary school uh, pupils from different age groups to ensure that they were fun, that they were engaging and interesting and that they also met their key learning outcomes. They've been designed to allow teachers to adapt them uh, to the age and ability of their group because the teacher will know uh, far better than us um, what their uh, pupils are able to do. Uh, we also uh, asked a number of teachers to read through the booklets to ensure that they were as clear as possible and easy to follow. Uh, follow. Uh, and uh, so following a uh, sign off from our colleagues in the Welsh Government, it was with some trepidation that we pressed the print button. Um, and uh, so as well as the physical resource that you can see here today, um, we, uh, we are also, um, uh, the, link, the resource will be linked to our website and um, we have a designated wall hanger section uh, where you'll be able to download some additional handouts that go with a number of activities 
these uh, will be available as uh, the downloadable PDFs, and um, all of the booklets will also be available online in the event of the school needing to replace them if they run out. That website is due to arrive on the 1st of September, ready for the new academic year. Following today's launch, um, along with uh, support from, from Welsh Government and local authorities, the wall hanger will be distributed to um, every school, uh, and we hope to see them hanging on the door, not unlike this one, something uh, like that, ready for the autumn term. Finally, uh, we want to ask for your help and support in making sure that teachers are aware of this resource. Um, nothing would uh, be more disappointing to think that um, it's not being displayed, it's not being used, and the teachers aren't aware of it. Um, we really want it to be used. We want feedback on how well it's working or not as the case may be. Uh, and we will, of course, continue to provide support to schools alongside the resource with our pupil workshops and our teacher training. And for an added incentive, we will be offering a 25% discount to, uh, on our, all of our workshops to any school that tweets a photo um, of the wall hanger displayed in their school before the 3rd of September. Um, so please encourage them to do that. Uh, just in case you haven't already seen, there are some, uh, some hashtags on our Twitter handle that we're using today displayed uh, on the screen, so please feel free to tweet. And in a moment, um, um, we'll be asking you to, uh, to pose uh, for a photo, but um, my colleagues will say something about that. Um, I just want to say, um, if you have had any questions about the resource, uh, what we've seen, uh, having had a look at it, a number of uh, our staff will be available for questions um, after the formal launch. Thank you very much for listening, and I really hope that uh, both teachers and, uh, and every primary school in Wales will truly benefit from this resource. Thank you very much. Uh, and now for um, a, local, a local authority perspective on these resources and um, our wider campaign, I'd like to invite Martin Coles to, uh, to come and speak. Martin is the um, looked after children education coordinator and lead professional for EAL Pupils in the Bay of Morgan Council. She's been very supportive of our campaign for many years. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Martin Coles.
with in teachers on very large maps, sort of being crazy, and they really were. And, um, and the labelling part of the workshop came about mainly for the what's right, what's not. And I was waiting to see how this year three class who didn't hold back were going to go. And then um, the term race came up. And the children asked for how many races are there, and we got discussion. And the children very quickly got to there's one race, the human race. So, fantastic point, we're okay. Then, how do you do with these classes? There's a child who kind of keeps going up and keeps challenging everything. And so, okay, which child do we want to watch? So, after the, the workshop was moving on, I said, actually, sir, or Christian, come back, come back. I want, I want to talk more about the race thing. And then the conversation of the next race came up, and this boy was horrified because he figured there was one race, the human race, he was fine with that in his head. And he said, Well, if there is this term mixed race, why doesn't it make sense? Because you said there's one race, so if there's mixed race, does that mean that humans and aliens? He really wasn't sure about the term mixed race. And I could see Christian think, Okay, they get through, they look cute, but we're in there quite dangerous and deadly. And this child would not let it go. So in the end, this all said, okay, how would you describe the child that next year? And this child, um, I, I, because I've worked with the school, I knew mean, that mum was quite Welsh and dad was from Ghana, so I thought, I wonder where this is going to go. And um, this child said, it's Joe. I don't need to call him anything else, it's Joe. And for me, that was a poignant message. It was, it was good to see children challenging a workshop that I've seen lots of times, but in the end, what happened was the school looked at their policies about how they make sure that equality is weaved through the curriculum. It's not just Black History Month, we're not going to just do everything for that month. We need to make sure we are challenging our children every single month to show race to the car, for the commission to come back to an insert, and still to this day, in their school improvement plan, I can see the impact of that workshop and a workshop in in the year two. And I thought we need to make sure that we invest. So we have a very tight program that children have a workshop in year five, year six, year seven, and nine. Because what we want to do, we want to we want the conversations to evolve. Because what's great is that um, in year seven, when the workshops happen again, it's interesting to see the dynamics of conversation with children who have the workshops in primary school. And they're very challenging, they want to know what's right, what isn't right, and the teachers in the secondary schools are sometimes taken back with the confidence of the children's dialogue. And what's really interesting with children because of ability, when other children come in, and again, there are challenges with regards to language, because a lot of the children are great, well, police people with regards to saying that's right and that's wrong, and they're quite articulate and confident about saying why. So that is a good thing, and that's something that we've invested in over the years, and as an authority, we'll continue to invest in that. So, what do we make sure we do that the Islamophobia and all the workshops are a starting point for schools? So that if you get schools that a teacher hasn't seen the workshop, whatever reasons, that all the teachers have access to resources, and they are a good starting point just to get discussions going. But what's really important for us is that this is not just a certain time PSE conversation. This has to be reflected in the curriculum and more than in October. So what we make sure with regards to schools that have isolated learners, especially isolated travelling communities, we have to make sure that they use the tool, get all the resources that show race in the park given to the schools over the years. Because there is the understanding that once the workshop's delivered, that we observe the staff in the school to live for a similar workshop because we want the school to have ownership. But these children go to their schools. The teachers need to be confident about challenging discrimination and that can only happen with time and they need good quality results as a starting point. So our schools, they like the workshops and they expect them and they expect a very high standard of workshop and they get them. So that's why in the way we invest very heavily to show us the workshop. And in the climate we are in, there is the idea we do more for less. But what we've found, we've looked at other providers, show rates in the red card, 
do engage the children, and make a difference to children. And one of the children that I thought about with regards to the journey show was in the car. And basically, in, in not just the Vale, across South Wales, I think of one of my young people, and it's interesting, I was looking at the, um, the toolkit, there was a phrase called cultural dissonance, and I thought, that sounds very fancy. And what worried me about that was that it was a good explanation, but I thought we need to remember that we're talking about racism. And with regards to this child in particular, she has experienced, I would say, polite racism. The fairground family, when she was in the primary sector travelling across Wales, her poor attendance wasn't really questioned. Her quotation wasn't really questioned. There was, I would say, polite racism. There was no expectation for this family to achieve. And to be honest with you, they fell off the radar and it was unfortunate. Then, when the family came to the authority, she was the end of year nine. And she said, I'm not going to go to school much since I was eight, so I'm not going to do it now. You may be trying to change the service, but I'm not going to go, I don't want to go. Not going to do this. But what was really good was that the school, who again had much experience workshop, really confident with regards to challenging discrimination, they worked really hard with the family and they said the resources help. The resources may be a need for primary school children. They said in secondary school it's a really good starting point for staff. But because this school saw past her traveller, status. And bear in mind, at the end of the year nine, some term and think, well, maybe she's got all this work, but it's not work. She left. At the end, she finished year 11, and she finished with seven GCSEs, two Ds, maths and English. She's now in her second year of college, and she wants to do social care. She wants to be a social worker, because she said she wants to make a difference. She doesn't want people, she doesn't want the same things happen to other children, she said. She doesn't want people to say, you're from this background, you're not going to achieve. She said that will not happen. So now, what she wants to do is she wants to give talks to schools herself. She wants schools, if they've got one traveller, ten traveller, twenty of her own family, she wants the schools, the teachers, to see past that label. And that's why when I looked at the resources of Art Speak today, I wanted to talk about my Rachel, because this resource will help children like Rachel who as she puts out, faced a lot of racism, but she said it was polite. It was there, there. And then as she got older, it was overt name calling. But she said she felt able to talk to the teachers because they had the workshop, and the name calling, in the nicest way, it came out in the workshop. But it gave her the confidence to say, I'm not going to do those things, I'm going to tell someone to do something about it. But the main thing that when I spoke to Rachel about me coming today, and I said, can I talk about it? Just don't do pictures. But what she said to share with you, please sit past where someone is from. Because Rachel is Rachel. She may come from a traveling family, but it doesn't mean that we, expect, we shouldn't expect anything from her. Which is why this resource, it needs to be in every single classroom in Wales. It needs to be used. Even if the school says, we well, don't have travellers, we don't have travellers. They need to open their eyes, everybody does. Because it's really easy to get complacent to think on, I read a book a few years ago on Fina, it's not good enough for our young people. We really, really, really need to, without too many education, but raise the bar for all children. We need to help them dream, and we can't make them, let them dream if we don't have high expectations. So please, please, spread the word for this resource, because I don't want any more Rachels to go through that. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, thank you Martin for those uh, comments uh, and the short notice we asked Martin to speak at this event, so I'm sure you're going to see. Uh, thank you to all of you for attending today's event. I know some of you come from a long distance to be with us today. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, the event and also being in this wonderful venue in the Senate. Uh, the Welsh Assembly Government and the National Assembly of Wales have practiced over the years since we've established the campaign in 2006 here in Wales. 
and uh, we are we are really thankful and happy that we have to continue to to back the work. Big thank you to the minister um, Hugh Lewis as well as the deputy minister Ken Stakes for supporting the resources. Um, this issue is also hopefully be invaluable for the schools and the teachers across Wales. So I really would like to say a big thank you to the Welsh government. Might give them an applause for this. It's been a really big challenge for the staff in Cardiff and the North East putting the year resources together. Uh, there's been many sleepless nights for the team, and I think they have done a really magnificent job. Um, sometimes we've probably scratched our heads thinking, okay, well, what's next? How are we going to get into the schools? And this is where hopefully yourselves will come into, into it because you've got to get these into the primary schools uh, and the secondary schools. The problem we have is uh, we, we actually don't have the budget because we've worked over budgeted on the resources, a lot of time and effort of the staff. We didn't really foresee or put together the resources. But um, the team were really passionate and dedicated that we wanted to put the resources together. Uh, so we decided to go for it, and in uh, the 12 months, hopefully, we'll see fruit in terms of the schools making sure they use the resources. We, we can't see these resources just stuck on the shelves in the classrooms, uh, they, they really have to be used. We continue to get reports of uh, racism, not just in the schools and playgrounds, but also in wider society and in football, for example. So this is a real uh, issue, it's alive and kicking, let's, let's not be around push, it's a real problem in our society. Um, the media is such a, an important score, this is well, we're going to ensure that there's a balanced report uh, going from uh, publications from the papers. If you remember last week, you may have seen in America the uh, terrible tragedy that happened uh, in the church. In, uh, on the day after, in the morning, I looked at the front page of the papers, um, of the 11 papers, and only, I think it was two or three papers uh, actually have headlines surrounding the less uh, positive in, in America. These two people decided to go with their favourite uh, topics, that's the mail, uh, around Muslims, uh, and this one was the Express around migrants. So you can see that uh, there's some real, real challenges ahead, um, and we really must make sure we, uh, we make sure that young people, of, well, that looks like tomorrow, the young people of today, uh, do, get, uh, do get the right education and support. We recently met uh, a local authority in Wales just uh, a few weeks ago, and um, coming out of the meeting, I think I think I was more in my head in disbelief in terms of uh, the reaction we got when we said that uh, we needed some funding to go into the, the area, in that area, uh, and we'd have reports of racism from schools uh, and classrooms, um, and without the funding, we could have gone into the school. So I said to the senior management staff, I said, I'd like to leave your office with the confidence that uh, you really are on top of this and you can tackle these issues if they do arise. Uh, having two young sons myself, one is five and one is eight, you know, it does change your own parent and you want to make sure that young people don't go through what people have experienced in previous years. And to be honest, we, uh, we left the, the meeting about an hour later um, and I think we were probably thinking, well, there is no confidence, I don't have any confidence in, in this authority. Um, they have no funding, yet the schools that we tried support and access so they don't have the funding but somebody needs to take a, a, a grasp of this issue and actually remember the victims of racism that are in the school of playgrounds getting racial abuse day in day out you know it's not just about money it's, it's about humanity you know we've got to make sure we take ownership of this and hopefully these resources will support the schools and we do understand the school budgets are tight uh, actually the budgets are tight everywhere we know what the current situation is but we've got to make sure we, uh, we utilise these resources if we haven't got the budget to go in because teachers can use PE or science to educate young people around discrimination and racism. So it's vitally important that, uh, that the schools really um, do, do take care of these, you know, these resources of But well, we are here to support schools if they do this. But in reality, the campaign has been going for nine years in Wales. And, you know, over the past few weeks, um, we've been looking at ourselves in terms of what happens next because we don't have it, I mean, funded any longer. Uh, our funding was actually ran out uh, a few weeks ago. So uh, we're currently in a situation in the next 12 months. You know, we have to cut back in terms of our delivery and outputs. Uh, in the next 24 months, uh, I'm not sure if I'll be up on this stage actually talking to you like this. So, you know, we are in a real um, interesting time to head for our charity. You know, I am a passionate campaign manager and I'll, I'll do my best to encourage my team to work with young people in schools and teachers. But it's not just about show racism in their car, this is about local authorities, this is about politicians, this is about the schools, this is about the teachers and youth groups. And we all must, as yeah, the Welsh FAWSA, we all must tackle it together and wear it together.